The Story of Me is brought to you by Layuna Ontario Provincial District Council. Layuna, feel the feel power. power. Hello. From television to politics, our guest has made a name for herself. Uh, her daily presence on the small screen for 23 years, I bet it's still remembered by many. And then, as a politician, she made her mark fighting the good fight, fighting persistently for her place at Queen's Park, uh, but most importantly, for the province and for her community. With us today, Laura Albanese. Hello. Hello, Bill, and hello to all your viewers. It's uh, really a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be here with you, and thank you so much for, for taking the time. Um, I said that after 23 years on television, you're probably still stopped on the street to talk about that experience. Uh, as a politician, you were also a public figure. But, but television has a, a different way of, of marking people, no? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I'll still get people that will recognize me <laughs> in a store or a younger generations that will say, I used to watch you when yeah. I was a, a kid. Do they and bring up stories that, that, you, that you did? Uh, sometimes they do. Sometimes <laughs> they do. And sometimes they, they recall what uh, the atmosphere was like in their home. Yeah. Uh, oh, when uh, uh, the Italian news was on, we were not allowed to play. <laughs> or uh, we had to be quiet. Yeah. Uh, so th you'll get stories uh, such as those. Um, and, and sometimes it's uh, uh, very touching because it's a way to remember also maybe... Uh, a mother, a father, a grandmother who is no longer with them. Yeah. And it, yeah. it's, um, it's really interesting how, yeah. let's say, my face um, will remind yeah. them and of, that, somebody, be, of somebody they love. Yeah, it must be gratifying to you personally to know that you made an impact on, on the community in such a good way. Yes, it is gratifying. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to think that um, the television that we we used to do yeah. in those days um, was also very informative for yeah. communities whose first language is not yeah. English. Yeah. So whether, uh, well, I was speaking to and working with the Italian community, you with the Portuguese community, and um, the community uh, in a way gained because we, uh, we were the Google of that time. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, there was an appreciation for the educational component of, yeah. of our shows. Um, going back to your origins, uh, I noticed that your parents met in Canada. Yes. And your mom got pregnant with you and returned to Italy to have you? Yes. Your mother and decided to have you in Italy, not in Canada. It was my dad <laughs> that wanted me to be born Italian. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's interesting, the city that my dad was born in, and I was born in, is uh, called Taranto. Taranto. So yes. So it's Toronto with A's <laughs> instead of O's. So I just came across the yeah. ocean, but only changed a couple vowels, but really. But wanted you to be an Italian. It's, it's interesting. At that uh, time, there was no dual citizenship, right? Yeah. So um, the way to acquire it was for me to be born there, and then um, by flying back, I, yeah. I would still yeah. be Canadian. You right? did come back. Uh, you were nine months old. Nine months old. Uh, yeah. And then you returned to Italy at age four. Yes. Uh, and uh, you stayed in Italy till the age of 12. Uh, but this was just one of your 
many moves. I understand from a previous yeah. conversation we had yes. that in your youth, you moved back and forth between Canada and Italy something like 10 times? Yes, yes. Uh, my, uh, how my, did this come about? <laughs> my dad couldn't really make up his mind on where he wanted to stay. He loved uh, Canada um, for, I guess, the land of opportunity that it was yeah, yeah, at yeah. the time. And, uh, but he still could not forget his roots. Very in, proud of In Italy, Israel. so um, he, he, we went back and forth. Back and, he and would forth. Pack the family in three days, and yeah. it would be like we're going, we're leaving, Interesting. and then we would stay there, let's say, nine months, a year, and then it would happen again, and we'd be back here um, for the equivalent period of time, and yeah. then there we went again. You also have a brother, right? Yes, and Michael. he was part of this. Come and go. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And, and uh, I, I'm just curious, how did this uh, back and forth uh, affect the family, you personally, uh, as, as, as a youth, uh, your education, I guess? Yes. So, uh, I mean, there's positive and negatives, like yeah. with everything. Yeah. And uh, at the time, I wasn't very happy about all this change because every time uh, it meant um, leaving friends, making new friends, leaving school. Um, and in those days, Canadian schools were not recognized in Italy. So every time I would go back, I would have to give private exams for every single subject wow. to stay at par. And uh, when I came back here, it was easier. I had to just concentrate on English and spelling yeah, yeah. And, and grammar. But um, it, it, it kept me really... Um, busy on the books uh, did you all the time. Did, did it set you back a little bit? No. No. No, no, you no. Persisted. It, it, I was um, very determined yeah. not to be set back by this. And yeah. both my brother and I actually always kept at par. Um, but I like to think that, you know, I, it allowed me to live between two cultures. And it opened in a way my mind um, to the world and yeah to different to yeah. different realities yeah um so i at the end in the end there was a positive yeah it made me fluent in two different languages oh yeah and it um opened my personality um to be very inclusive inclusive yeah and and i know that <laughs> it served you well uh later on uh you you um got a diploma in accounting Yes. Uh, you took political science at the University of yeah. Roma. Yes. yes. Political science, which also later might have helped you. In those uh, days, um, you know, European Union, was, there was talk yeah, about yeah, the yeah, European yeah. Union. And um, so I never thought of politics as being in front of, uh, of, of in the front of yeah. politics, but yeah. more in the background yeah. in those days. And it, it fascinated me. What plans yeah. did you have for your profession when you were in school? Did you have any, any, any clear plans? My plans kept on changing because of the family moves, but um, I wanted to uh, perhaps go to Bruxelles where a European Union was being formed and, right. and be part of that, as I said, behind the it scenes. It was an exciting time. Yeah, too. so that so that would have been my goal at the time. Yeah. Uh, but life took me across an ocean <laughs> to a different country. Yeah, and uh, that's right. But before you came to Canada, yeah, in '76, yes, you volunteered to work at a radio station. I did. You had a good <laughs> voice, apparently. In 1976. Uh, a big change happened in Italy. Before that, we only had state radio. Uh, and we used to say that radio was liberated. It was privatized. But you had all these little radio stations that were popping up. Mm -hmm. And it was um, um, fashionable for teenagers such as myself to get involved in these radio yeah. stations. And it was all volunteer work that we would do after school. Yeah. And we got involved in um, and one day, the host um, got into an accident, couldn't make uh, <laughs> the live show, everything was live, and they asked me um, to go on air. To fill in. And to fill in. And, uh, and that's how I discovered that I had a good <laughs> voice, and I was subsequently given a show. 
Um, really? A show, huh? I was given a show. And yeah. uh, also, I was one of the first women in southern Italy that would do live radio from a club. In those days, it was very avant-garde. From a remote? Remote, yes. Wow. So on uh, Fridays or Saturday evenings, we would go on location and uh, we would broadcast from there. Mm-hmm. Yes. It was a good a, experience for you. It, huh? it was a primordial um, concept <laughs> of, of remote. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it was how a lot of fun. Is lot this of fun. where you might have started thinking about a, a career in, in this kind of media, radio, TV? Yes, yeah. yes. Uh, and then again, I I moved uh, once again and came uh, to Canada. Uh, and you know, I would have liked to be educated, but in that in those days there was no even a not even a journalistic journalistic uh, um, faculty that you could take really in Italy. Um, most journalists. Uh, had a background in classical um, subjects. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, so I had to, I'm sort of self-taught. I did a lot of observing, read a lot of books. And when I, when I first started at uh, CFMT, um, now Omni TV, uh, I, re- I recall speaking to many of my colleagues and they would say, oh, I'm, I studied at Ryerson, I you know, yeah. different places. And I would say, do you still have the books? <laughs> and, <laughs> oh. and I was raising my children, but yeah. at night when they went to sleep, I would read. Self-education and, can be yes. such a great experience. Uh, so because you out. study at your own pace. And yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, now in 79, yes. uh, you met your future husband in Italy. Brought him to Canada, <laughs> married here at City Hall. Yes. Went back to Italy and then returned to Canada in 81. And uh, uh, you settled here with your husband. And he's got a great name. I wish I had this name. <laughs> Germinio Pio Politi. That's right. Ooh. Germinio Pio Politi. <laughs> and uh, Germinio is an artist. He's an artist. Yeah. Uh, tell me a little bit about his art. Uh, so Germinio is... I know he paints, right? Yes, he paints and he does sculptures as well. Um, and I guess like every artist, but Germinio in particular, mm-hmm. is uh, always, uh, uh, I, I like to say, on the cusp of uh, um, new materials. Yes. How they can yes. be used. And, and so um, he's a con- contemporary artist and he's... Uh, um, excelled in collages. Um, oh. So, um, was it m- many times he would go out, in, and now it's very difficult to find them because posters used to be yeah. uh, very common in the city, um, in different places. Now, not as much, but he would tear down. The, the posters, bring them home, and he would always look for the ones with the thick crust ah. because they had a history. So it's the also he's history of consumerism and using that material and giving it new life in yeah. a work of art. Very good. So in 81, you settle uh, in Canada uh, in the York Southwestern neighborhood, right? Yes, who knew that it was York Southwestern? I didn't even know at the time. Yeah. But yes. Uh, your first employment, you worked for a construction company in accounting. Yes. Uh, but at the same time, you did some contract radio and TV hosting for Chin Radio. Yes. Uh <laughs> You also did um, uh, some work for a new station, a uh, radio station in Brampton for about yeah. five months. Ciao Radio. But, but your, be, your beginnings were really in with Chin, right? Yes. At the beginning, I was uh, uh, with Chin, and one of uh, uh, their famous announcers was uh, pregnant at the time, and they needed, again, Another someone... Another break who, for you. Yes, uh, <laughs> to, to fill in. And... Um, 
I was here and I was yeah. you and uh, they decided to to try me and so yes I worked at Chin at first and then this there was this new radio station at the time in Brampton yeah uh, and uh, I went to work with them and I had a daily uh, afternoon right. show. How was it to work with uh, Mr. Johnny Lombardi? Well it, uh, so it was obviously a lot of fun to yeah. get to know one of the pioneers of oh, yeah. multiculturalism in Canada. You may not know that his origins are from a small town in southern Italy called Bisticci. And uh, that is the same town that my mother comes from. Oh, and small world. It's a small world. And um, when my mother first came to Canada, uh, the, she settled near College Street and got to know the family quite well. Mm -hmm. And there was this bond because they were both from the same uh, town. And um, Johnny and I always, like, he always recognized that. It's like, it would be, he would say to me, Oh, you're my paisana. Uh -huh. you know? So it, that helped the relationship. <laughs> it helped the relationship, yeah. yes. Now we're going to talk about uh, your big break on television, which was. CFMT, uh, after it was renamed to uh, Omni Television, uh, but it's basically with Rogers most yes, of your time. But you started, I started with, with, with Dan Yanuzzi. With Dan Yanuzzi, yes. Yes, the first three years, yeah. uh, the television station was uh, still owned by Dan. Yeah, tell uh, me about that experience. Uh, what was your first assignment? Do you, do you remember? So I, <laughs> I was, um, I, I was hired. Really, I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah. Because I had um, uh, gone to the TV station to record actually some radio commercials. Yes. For to advertise the radio station that I was working for, Chao Radio, and uh, one of the managers walked by, heard my voice, and stopped and said waited till I finished recording, and then said to me, have you ever thought of working in television? And I said, no, not really. And I, I was being honest. Um, and she said, we're looking for somebody, and we're, we're interviewing and you in a few job. days. You got the job? Uh, yeah, after... I can't I, believe it. Yes, a third I got, major I got the job. <laughs> I got the job. My first assignment, so I, I was working on a show that was called Italianissimo, si. together with... Uh, Carlo Lanzi, who was an established host at the time. Yeah. But um, because of my voice, they also wanted me to try in the newscast. And it, the, the news director at the time was Angelo Persichilli. Yes. And um, so I, was, I became sort of a sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then yeah. uh, gained uh, more trust by the station, yeah. and we were would alternating evenings yeah. on air, and the rest is history. The rest uh, is history. We know that CFMT under Mr. Yanuzzi ran into financial trouble, and then Rogers took over. Um, it was quite a big change, wasn't it? It was a big change. Um, it was sad that... Uh, uh, then Yanuzzi ran into financial mm -hmm. hurdles. Uh, however, when Rogers arrived, I think it was, uh, for us who were working there, was kind of a renaissance era. Um, new, there was investment. There was investment in new A new style of new management studios. as well, right? Yeah, new style of management and um, investment in uh, equipment, investment in studios, and new shows uh, for all the different languages. And um, and it was beneficial at yeah. for the people that were working yeah. there. Um, yeah, I uh, started working on a show called Incontri, very successful uh, that I hosted yeah. together with uh, Vincenzo Somma, um, and uh, it was a show that uh, was uh, for the first time all um, filmed outside of the studio. So we would film our intros, or we did our throws all outside, and even the features, instead of being done in studio, it was on location. Were all done on location. Yeah, and it was a novelty. Yeah, you did assume uh, a lot of roles, and of course, in country, 
was one of them. Uh, you traveled to and Italy later on, many Omni times. News. Yeah. I know you you did, and we're going to talk a little bit about your your mm -hmm. travels. Uh, but you did Omni News with Vincenzo yes. Soma. No, um, Omni News was with um, Angelo Persichilli, and uh, ah, subsequently yeah. uh, Angelo stopped going on air, became yeah, yeah. A, 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 a bigger manager. And um, so I would go on air by myself, but there were other um, people that I shared the, the newscast with. Yeah. And, and Vincenzo for a certain period of time we as well. We have a picture of you yes. and Vincenzo, uh, and it says Omni News. So yes. you did some news with oh, him, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that, was, that was after, after the Encontri. Yeah. Yes. So you did, you did Italianissimo, you started. Uh, but you also did another show that I had never heard of, Giro Tondo. It was a children's show that no I used way. to do with a little frog. I didn't know that. <laughs> it was a uh, little frog. His, his name was Giorgio Pantano. <laughs> and uh, uh, we used to have um, uh, cartoons in Italian, in, but they didn't go to time. They were not enough to fill the mm -hmm. half hour. So Giorgio and I would have these conversations. Yes. Um, and uh, children found them very fun. And I would, uh, I bet. At, I, at time, I'd go, uh, let's say, even if I was walking down the street, I would see a family and a child would say, Look, Ma, it's <laughs> Giorgio's mother. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I know you did a lot of shows. Um, is there one in particular that it's your first love? My first love was news. News. It was news. Um, however, being the mother of uh, two young children, yeah. it wasn't conducive to that lifestyle. Mm. And um, when uh, the opportunity to change and do something different, yeah. um, like Incontri, Incontri came around, I, <clears throat> I seized it. <clears throat> Incontri was my se second favorite because yeah. it, it was so innovative yeah. um, and it allowed me to do uh, things that were so different, but it also allowed me to come home at a decent time. I know. And, and, but I <laughs> and also to know read that to my kids and look at, yeah. you know, look at their homework and put them to bed. To give you that freedom. Uh, but I, I, um, I followed your career at the time because I, I worked in the same building. Yes. Uh, you did a lot of travel. Uh, and a lot of, of very interesting shows. I know you did 9-11. Uh, you treated yes. it so well. But then you went to Italy for all kinds of things. Um, yes. Uh, we went... We, we, we would, the show would travel to Italy every year. Yeah. And um, we used to try to visit the regions and the little towns where Italian Canadians... Yeah. Uh, the majority... Uh, yeah. Italian Canadians come from. We did a lot of comparison features, uh, but we also would uh, go to Italy. For example, the Sanremo Festival. Sanremo. To, to uh, so that was pure entertainment. You interviewed the stars, the big yeah. singers of the day. Um, but, but you also, also did the beatification of um, exactly. Padre Pio. So I, remember I was saying that. yes. I was saying we also would go for significant events, yeah. events that would be significant to yeah. our audience. The beatification of Padre Pio was one of them. Uh, Padre Pio is still, t to this day, I mean, he's a saint now, but extremely loved by the community. Yeah. I think you, yeah. you also did the funeral of... Uh, and of the a funeral Pope, of... Uh, uh, yes, John Paul II? John Paul II, yeah. yeah. So major yeah. events you covered. That was so In Encontre. Yes. Uh, a great team, huh? Yeah, I loved my team. We, yeah. and I, we were like family. We were, we were, we were yeah. like, and we still keep in touch. Um, most you do. of us, most That's of us, cool. still, yeah, from time that to time, great. we still update each other on where we are in our life. Yeah, after 23 years of a very interesting and intense life, you entered politics. Mm -hmm. And on a previous conversation, you told me that you had. Um, uh, been invited to run many times. This is before 2007. Mm -hmm. 2007 being the year that you that you started. Why didn't you run before? Were you too, having too much fun doing the television thing or what? 
I, I, I loved my job. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was the right time. I was also raising a family. Oh yeah. And, uh, I would always put it off and say, yeah, probably later one day, mm -hmm. one day. Uh, and then in, um, 2006, my, my daughter was in her last year of university. Um, September is the month where my birthday falls on. And, uh, uh, we were celebrating with my family and, um, my children said to me, well, what is it that you haven't done in your life that you still would like to do? <laughs> you know, you raised us and now we're basically finished with school. This is the time where you should do something that is for you. And um, coincidentally, during that period of time, the local um, representative, the MPP that represented the area where I lived, Joe Cordiano, resigned. So... Ah. There was sort of a natural opening, but I thought, oh, they probably already have somebody. They're not yeah. waiting around for yeah. me. Yeah. Turned out that uh, they actually um, were, were right in the middle of the search for, for a, a candidate. candidate. Yeah. And, uh, and I got involved. Yeah. And, so and so your, your first venture was on a by-election. It was on but a by-election. But it was a bit controversial then, was it not? There was a, a gentleman who contested your candidacy. Uh, briefly, can you tell me about that? Yes, and I had um, I had no idea when, uh, let's say, I got to the day of the nomination without knowing that there was any um, anyone that wanted to contest my nomination. Yeah. So it it happened um, during the nomination process, yeah. um, it, and it was a young man. Yeah. Uh, who. Uh, I guess, you know, had been interested in being the candidate and, and thought that it wasn't, uh, I guess, fair that I, because I was um, a woman in uh, Italian. Um, but I can, I, I, you know, everybody has their own reason. And he was a yeah. young male. Um, his background was, you know, he came yeah. from the black so he community. Thought he, he should have been the, he the candidate. He thought he should have been the candidate. And, yes. and he, had, he launched the lawsuit, which eventually mm. went nowhere. Right? Was settled yeah. somehow. I was not involved in yeah. that. Now, yeah. for that my election, if I recall, mm -hmm. uh, you lost uh, to the new Democratic uh, Party um, candidate, uh, yes. Paul Ferreira. Yes. And I mention his name because you encountered him later again. <laughs> yes, Paul and I ran against each other for yeah. a, a number of elections. Yeah, so yeah. you did we developed lose... a relationship in a way. <laughs> yeah, you narrowly lost, so it was not a, a big loss, uh, but you didn't get discouraged. You continued to to be involved. Uh, as a candidate for the general election, which was to follow a few months later. Yes. Uh, why didn't you give up? <laughs> so I didn't give up, Bill, because I was, uh, um, I was so surprised at the number of people that had voted for me. Mm -hmm. Even though I had lost, I was surprised at, at, at how high that number was. And, uh, and I thought, well, I, I, I had to try again. Yeah. I had to try yeah. for the people that had had faith in yeah. me. I had yeah. to try for myself because you don't always win in life. And yeah. That's uh, true. losing was a significant experience, but you also have to learn to get back up on your feet. Yeah. And, and your persistence and paid I was off persistent. because uh, when the general election came uh, in provincial in election October, came yeah. a few months later, uh, you won. Yes. Wow. Uh, we have this a picture, picture here. This is the picture. <laughs> of, of election <laughs> night. Look at your husband. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. He looks like a winner as well. My family was thrilled. Uh, tell me about this night. I mean, you, you broke the ceiling, so to speak. Totally unexpected yeah. because of that. Yeah, you run every election uh, knowing that nothing is certain. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and coming from a loss, even more so. 
Yeah. Uh, so we didn't have any great expectations, but um, and we were, I believe, the last writing to be called. Ah, uh, a long night. It was, it a, was a very, <laughs> very long night. Yeah. Um, but it, 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 it was really a gratifying feeling. I'm quite sure. Now, as a, an MPP, uh, you were appointed a parliamentary assistant to the minister, minister of culture. Um, and there were also a number of projects that you embarked on. Um, now, first, um, you become a PA, as they call it, the parliamentary yeah. assistant, right away. Pretty well? Pretty well. Yeah. yeah. A few, few months after, I think, a month or two after. Is, is there, tell me about the process. Uh, do people apply to become PAs? No, no, or? no. You're appointed at the will of the Premier. Uh, the, uh, the pre oh, the so, Premier is the one that appoints you. Yes, yes. The I Premier see. appoints you. Yeah. So the, for, at first, when a government is formed, the Premier will choose its cabinet. So there would be a cabinet announcement, yeah. all the ministers are chosen. And then it doesn't get as much attention. Yeah. Um, after a few weeks, uh, the premier would appoint a number of parliamentary assistants. Yeah. So it's, that's the second announcement. So, that's right. Yeah. Uh, now, you embarked on a, on a number of projects. Uh, is it correct to say that most of these projects were of a local nature? Uh, I'm thinking about the, the funding of the Jane Street Hub. So the Jane Street Hub, when I uh, became the MPP, was a concept on paper. And um, the Ministry of Health was uh, still looking for um, a la the land where to build it. Uh, that was identified. Yeah. And, um, and at that time, these community hubs were new. but I knew that our community was in great need of it. So I yeah. made it a point to push for the realiz realization of this community hub and brought every single minister of health yeah. to the community, bringing it always to their attention uh, was a bit of a nuisance. And I was so lucky to see that usually as an MPP, you don't know if you get reelected. And you hardly get the chance in one term to see a project yeah. uh, to completion. To completion. Uh, and this was the project that I was able to see to come mm -hmm. to completion within that term. So this had to do with the improvement of some infrastructures, right? So like a the, school. Communi the community hub, why was it so needed? By It was a new concept at the time, a uh, fairly new concept. Um, so it, it offers uh, nonprofit organizations okay. come together. Uh, there is uh, health, um, dental, you know, that could be offered. Yeah. Um, there could be organizations that offer immigration programs uh, 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 for the youth, uh, a child a care. A multitude of services. A multitude of services and uh, programs for women yeah, and, yeah. Uh, uh, and they're all under the same roof and okay. it, it becomes a hub yeah and they're sort of a concept of a square yeah. of a piazza where people can come together and also hold different events yeah your writing was also plagued with many transit issues i know you got involved yeah. with uh, metro links oh yeah quite a bit quite as a an bit. mpp right yes as an yeah. mpp um the the up express the shuttle that takes yeah, you yeah. to the airport between and, and, and union station uh was um scheduled to be built and to to cross the riding but the initial concept had a train just flying by the community yeah not stopping there it would have closed all the streets uh -huh. and uh it would have divided the community in two you would have had the hospital on one side, schools on the other. Um, it was not, it was not, it didn't think of, it wasn't the project that built community. No. So we fought very hard. I fought very hard together with the community to get a stop. And Westwood. you did. We did. Yeah. We also got the, the, 
trained to be tunneled for part of it. Uh huh. Um, not as long as we would have wanted to, but CP was not on site. Yeah. Um, but we did get a tunnel, so enough that only one street was closed and the others were kept open, keeping that connection yeah. for the community. So now, as an MPP, you must have done a terrific job because in 2011, you were reelected. I <laughs> <laughs> you were promoted to quite a variety of positions. Parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Labor. Yes. Parliamentary assistant to the Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sport. Right. Parliamentary <laughs> assistant to the Premier. And also, you were also made Deputy Government Whip. Yeah. And then, uh, towards the end, 2014, uh, you were also appointed as the Minister, uh, pardon me, the Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing. Now, is, and this, is this, with so yeah. many of these um, promotions, is this usual? Is this, is this something not out of the ordinary? So many of them. If we were um, in the... In there, there was a lot of work to be done, and I'm they sure. needed parliamentary assistance <laughs> to help out. Um, it, w it was so interesting for me to learn. Yeah. Um, I was blessed with the fact that I moved um, across ministries. For example, when I was at, uh, at the Ministry of Labor, I did some important work yeah. um, preparing a report for the minister on the underground economy yeah, and uh, looking at that from a safety point of view. Yeah. How do you make uh, construction sites, for example, safe, um, notwithstanding the underground economy? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I had the way, and then I, I had the, the opportunity to pick up the, the same uh, issue at the Ministry of Finance, uh, when they asked me to do a report um, to combat the underground economy from a revenue point of view, and that was later on after that was the, later on, your yeah. second uh, win, right? Yes, after yeah, because 2014, in yeah. 2014 you faced again your nemesis, <laughs> Freire from the NDP, yes. and you won again. And, I and won then again. Yeah. you were now talking about having become the, the PA for the Minister of Finance, uh, and you were able to bring your experience from yes, before from the to other this important to, yeah. uh, position, eh? Mm -hmm. uh, and the minister at the time was Charles Souza. Uh -huh. And um, What was the focus of your, of your involvement with finance at the time? I reviewed the uh, credit union and... Um, um, Cas Populaires Act, um, which w was one of uh, the items uh, that was uh, on uh, the Minister of Finance mandate to complete. So I did that, and then I uh, also, as I mentioned, worked on a report for, on the underground economy. Uh, I also um, assisted with, uh, every year, the government travels and um, the Ministry of Finance uh, conducts pre-budget consultations Public across consultation. the province. Yeah. Uh, there's a committee you with were all involved three in parties. That, eh? Oh yes, I yeah. was involved with that. Yeah. And I also assisted the minister with his own consultations mm -hmm. uh, across the province. It, 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 it was very rewarding as, a, yeah. as, a, as one of the positions that I held. Yeah. Also rewarding, must have been in 2016, when you were appointed Minister of Citizenship and Immigration. immigration. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect that at all. Um, but yes, I was appointed minister. Yeah. And, uh, and what a ministry. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah. In because compass. all of a sudden you have a different set of priorities, I think. Well, you have to get to know the ministry and you have to... Uh, I tackled it. I, I tackled it the same way that I would have. Yeah. That I had done all throughout, uh, local issues or as yeah. a parliamentary assistant. You you try, to, first of all, to educate yourself. 
as to what the work yeah. that needs to be done is. You have a mandate letter yeah. uh, that, that also guides you in uh, what's needed. And um, then you just roll up your sleeves and yeah. you get to work. And one of the things that I was tasked with was uh, signing uh, a Canada-Ontario Accord. There's Immigration usually, agreement, yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, because yeah. Uh, it had, in a way, uh, expired, if you will. It had not been re re-signed yeah. uh, on time. Yeah. And so we had to put focus on that. And we yeah. were able to negotiate um, better terms yeah. for the province of Ontario. Yeah. Do you think that that particular uh, agreement uh, was um, uh, something that really, truly improved immigration in Ontario under your leadership as a minister? It made some steps forward. There are many issues that need to be modernized within uh, the realm of uh, citizenship. Still today? Yes. Still today? Still yeah. today. It's a, it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. It's um, So we, we did, uh, we were fortunate to, to make some improvements to the agreements and, um, and we're working to do more. Yeah. Now, but then elections stop you. <laughs> yeah. So 2018, Premier uh, Kathleen Wynne um, became quite unpopular in Ontario, and and we know what happened as a result of that. Uh, many um, MPPs <laughs> lost their seats, and you were one of them. Yes. Um, now. You had gone through quite a number of victories, accomplishments, and all of a sudden, the rug is taken from under, under your, feet. your feet. How did you take it? Uh, going into that election, uh, I was aware of the fact that the, gov the liberal government at the time had been in power for um, quite a while, and there was... At least 15 uh, years, I think. Yes. Yes, and, and there was a desire for change, which yeah. is normal. Yeah. It's normal for people to so want are, change at a certain point. Are you point. saying that it didn't come as a complete surprise? It never does come as a complete surprise. Yeah. But um, does it affect you personally? Yes, of course it does. Yeah. How did of it? Of course it does, because it's... Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to continue the work that I was doing. Of course. Um, secondly, you're, I was so busy doing so many, uh, you know, in so many projects, yeah. right? And, uh, th there is, uh, uh, that, uh, regret that now you won't get to see it yeah. come to an end yeah. and come to fruition. However, you have to be respectful. That's, you oh, yeah. know, when you go into into politics that uh, that it will not be forever if you so, had if you had continued in politics what would what would you have wanted to further accomplish i would i would have well i had some projects that were still on the go oh, see yeah. the completion for example of the eglinton crosstown that's also in my community um yeah. and uh it, it still has not opened and there are neighborhoods that are um, significantly affected. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it will be in a positive way by this uh, project. Bringing, again, continuing to bring investments in the community. Yeah. There is still more work to be done. Um, but uh, I think I was, um, um, I think no one expected as many MPPs to lose yeah. from our party. Yeah. Um, so it, it took a while. It took me over three months to close down all of my offices and, uh, and then, you know, sift through all the paper, yeah. uh, sift through all the pictures, sift <laughs> through all, you know, everything and say, what do I keep? What do I, uh, you know, just toss out and, uh, and then decide where, what, what you're going to do in the future. It's a, it's a great opportunity. I mean, you have to reinvent yourself again, once yeah. again, and, um, uh, and reflect. 
Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very happy about um, the work that I did as, yeah. uh, and I accomplished as uh, a member of provincial parliament. And um, not everybody gets a chance uh, to do the things that I did. No. At the time, there were only 107 MPPs, so you were you one of, now it's more, yeah. uh, of 107 people that are mm -hmm. uh, representing the citizens of Ontario. I wasn't even born here. <laughs> Ontario and Canada yeah. are truly unique yeah. um, in, that, in that opportunity. What do you miss the most in politics? The people and the possibility to influence uh, decisions in a, to improve the life of people in a positive way. Of course, the inevitable question is, will you run again? So the answer is no, most likely not. Really? Yes. And um, in politics, we say never say never. That's right. But uh, I have made the decision that I will not be running in 2022 mm -hmm. in the next provincial election. Um, and I won't be running in politics uh, anytime soon. Yeah. I want to go back to uh, some of, of your um, activities, uh, extracurricular, I guess, in the community. You've uh, volunteered in the past for many charities, Easter Seals, Sick Kids, Variety Village. Uh, you've embraced a number of causes, like people with disabilities, particularly children, yeah. Uh, injured workers, undocumented workers. I guess some of this, these activities might be related to you uh, as a politician, but um, uh, you seem to have focused on, on fighting injustice, social injustices, yeah. wherever they are. And that's led you to a variety of events, uh, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of pictures of you attending all kinds of, of events, uh, some more uh, social than others. I, I know there are festival occasions like Italy Day, Portugal Day. Yes. Um, and you've also, you were instrumental in, in bringing about Albanian... Uh, um, uh, oh, Heritage Month. The Heritage Month. Yes, yes. Yeah. So... Um, many events, many people. As, a, as an elected official, you, you are invited to many events. Yeah. Uh, and you attend many of them, as many as you can. Uh, well, one, because we want to um, represent your community, but also be part of what they're celebrating. Or, and keep in touch. Uh, and keep in touch, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and for me, it was, uh, I guess this is the journalist that comes back, right? Yeah. There is the curiosity of, uh, uh, well, how is this particular festivity celebrated in that community? And to be part of it is such an honor. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I took every opportunity that I could. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, the Albanian Heritage Month. My last name is Albanese. And That's also, right. <laughs> and uh, uh, my family has was you know, comes from Italy, and they've yeah. been there for generations. Yeah. But um, the Albanian community, uh, the leaders of the Albanian community, believe that maybe, maybe in the Middle Ages, at some point, yeah, it could be that the family. Originally was from Albania and That's then right. moved There's to quite Italy. A movement. There, there was a lot, a lot of movement. movement yeah. Yes, and there is yeah. an Albanian community in Italy yeah. as well. Uh, anyways, they um, they approached me uh, and asked me to be their champion in declaring um, November uh, as their heritage. as their heritage month. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so I, I worked with them and I yeah. brought that forward. That's and right. uh, then because I became a minister, I could not present the private members bill myself. And uh, but somebody uh, else did but, it for you. Yes, yeah, my yeah. my my colleague at yeah. the time. Uh, now you have Dr. received 
we're going to change the chapter here a little bit, but it's still related. Uh, you have received a few recognitions, both here and your native Italy. Mm. Now, without the meaning any of these awards, uh, is there a particular one closer to your heart? They're all important. I know that. Yes. But is there one that kind of has a special corner in your heart? Uh, I think the Premio Puglia uh, is probably, and you have a picture there. Oh, right behind me. <laughs> it is. Yes. Uh, because that's uh, the region where I was born, yeah. um, recognizing me as uh, uh, a person who uh, has distinguished uh, herself uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. um, so that was significant. You've for done me. them proud. Yes, I've done them <laughs> proud. And uh, it was Very nice to go back and to receive yeah. uh, the, the award. Um, so I think that was the most significant. But they're all, they're I all. mean, any time yeah, someone I know. I know. decides to recognize yeah. you in, in, in their own way, yeah. it is so special. I, um, I'm very grateful to all the awards that I received, yeah. you know, for all the awards that I received. Now, aside from your very charming husband, whom I've <laughs> met, uh, you have two adult children and two grandchildren. You're a grandmother. I'm a grandmother. I'm a proud grandmother. Yeah. Yes, here they are, my Luca and there Mila. And here they're, well, they're <laughs> a little younger than what they are now, but yeah, uh, yeah they're still... Uh, very young yeah. and very precious, yes. Now, uh, as a family, I guess you've done some traveling. Um, gardening mm -hmm. is one of your hobbies. Yes. Reading. Reading. Of yes. course, spending time with your grandchildren. Must it's my be, favorite. It's more than a hobby. It's my favorite it's, time. Yes. <laughs> it's your favorite yeah. time. Yeah. But there is an interesting um, activity here that you told me about before. Survival camping. Canoeing. <laughs> Yes. And you go with at least husband. once a year with your husband canoeing. Yes. Uh, the, Love of nature, right? Yes. And my husband loves um, the Canadian wilderness, uh, especially in the fall when the colors change. Yeah, yeah. It's always been an inspiration for him. And he would go on these trips, usually on his own, and would always encourage me to join him, and I was kind of reticent at the beginning, uh, but then we agreed that I would go at least <laughs> once a year and follow him on these trips. Yeah. And actually yeah. I learned to, um, I came to enjoy them and have become a good uh, canoeer, and yeah. uh, I like hiking, I, and I enjoy nature. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You also, one other responsibility that you have right now is to uh, care for your 91-year-old mom. Yeah. Yes. And my mom, thankfully, is in very good health for her age. I mean, there's a lot of maintenance that needs to happen, but uh, we're blessed that she's uh, still oh. in uh, fairly good health yeah. and uh, independent. She's blessed to have you. And she, she's been living with us, and in a way, she allowed me to have these two very demanding careers. Mm -hmm. um, broadcasting was demanding because, uh, mm -hmm. uh, especially when I was uh, um, the news anchor of, uh, of a newscast, I had to be there live, and our show was airing 8 to 9, so very late in the evening uh, for the mother of young children. And in politics, it absorbs you seven days a week. So um, she was there for me. She was very helpful, yeah. Throughout all this time. As good parents yes. can be. Yes, and that's why it's so important to me to, uh, to have a good relationship, to establish a good relationship with my grandkids now. That is, uh, that is one of, of uh, my goals. And you know? I'm sure you're a great comma, grandmother. <laughs> You're not a great grandmother yet. No, but, no. But you are a grandmother of... I try to be. I try to be. <laughs> of great stature. Uh, you know, we, we've, we've sort of uh, come to the end of this conversation. There was a lot more that we should talk about and could talk about maybe next time. 
maybe next Laura. time. <laughs> maybe we not. Thank you this very much for sharing uh, your distinguished uh, career and life path with me. Wow. Much appreciated. Well, thank you, Bill, for um, choosing me and telling my story. You mm -hmm. know, I always think that uh, it's, it's my story is the same of, as that of many immigrants to Canada. But I have been lucky. I've been lucky to um, to have a, a great family, to have a, a wonderful, two wonderful careers, and, uh, and and to have given back. And I want to continue to do yeah, so. Yeah, your 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 life story is an inspiring one. And aside from liking you personally, <laughs> <laughs> I I think your story uh, deserves to be told. Thank you again. Thank you. Have a great day. Next time, we'll talk about my involvement with the Portuguese community. Ah. Uh -huh, which yeah. was also very, very important that is true. throughout my career. That will be interview number two. <laughs> we have a date. Thank you again, Laura. <laughs> thank you. And thank you to our viewers. Until next time, thank you. <laughs>